Miami Gator on Twitter or uh, at Gator E I T E twenty three uh, went to an event in Florida where Debbie Wasserman Schultz was a speaker, and Debbie is going to answer a question on Medicare for All here and listen to how pathetic her logic is as to why she doesn't support it. Where do you stand on single payer health care? Okay. Um, I, um, I, support, I support the concept of Medicare for All, but what I, what I support now, because we have already adopted systemic health care reform, is working within the Affordable Care Act to improve it so that we can make sure that we expand health care and, uh, well, I mean, HR 6, you, seven. you don't HR have to six, seven. Some, of you, six. Uh, some of you may not agree, but the reality is we would be starting over. And just like I don't think that we should be starting over by repealing uh, the, the, or doing anything that the Republicans are suggesting we do, the Affordable Care Act is, is working. It's, it's added quality coverage for millions of people. We need to expand Medicaid so that it, it covers you know, virtually everybody. And so I support Medicare for All if we were starting from the beginning, but we're, we're not starting from the beginning. And I also have always supported the idea that I'm gonna, I'm gonna support the most significant healthcare reform that we can actually pass. So while I wish that you know Medicare for all uh, and single payer was something that we could achieve, if we try to put all our eggs in that basket instead of working to improve what we have, then I fear that we are not going to cover the number of people that we need to. What I do support, though. Yeah. If it were, but if it, if it politically. Medicare for, for all actually became viable if we elected enough people in of Congress that could make it happen, then I most definitely would be supportive of it. But it really would depend on whether or not the where we were with the Affordable Care Act, because I mean you saw what how difficult it was for us to get that into law and to get it up and running and to cover you know. 20 million additional people and provide historic benefits to people who didn't even have those benefits, even the people who were already working and had coverage. And to start from scratch again, I mean, I just think that that would put us so far backward that we would actually do more harm than good. What I do, I'm sponsor, supportive of, which I supported when we were debating the Affordable Care Act, was the public option. Because the Affordable Care Act should have had a public option plan so that you have a public option to compete with the private plans so that we can keep premiums down. Of course, we couldn't get, that, that passed the House of Representatives, and I was a co-sponsor of that, of that amendment, but it, we couldn't get it out of the Senate. But I'm, there is legislation that's been introduced to add a public option to the Affordable Care Act, and I'm a co-sponsor of that legislation. Thank you all so much. Okay, let me walk you through this, because this is very important, and it exposes her for the liar that she is. So, she starts off with, well, look, in theory, conceptually, hypothetically, if we had a clean slate, well, then, then I would support Medicare for all. So, in other words, I support it, but I don't support it. Like, I mean, I'm, I like it, and I want all you to get off my ass about it, because I know that's what you want, so I'm gonna say I, I, I support it. But I, I don't support it, I'm not going to co-sponsor it, I'm not going to vote for it, and I'm not in favor of it. So, in other words, get off my ass, please. I'll say I like it, but I'm not going to vote for it or be in favor of it. So then you're not in favor of it, just keep it real and call it what it is. I can't stand the fucking walking on eggshells and, like, tap dancing and, like, you know, I, no, I wouldn't co-sponsor it, I'm not going to vote for it, but I like it. What the fuck is that? Okay, then, uh... She goes on to just lie. This is a lie. She goes, I mean, we shouldn't be repealing the Affordable Care Act or doing anything the Republicans want to do. This is the exact straw man that Hillary Clinton used against Bernie Sanders in the primary, where they just make up, well, to do Medicare for all, obviously, you have to repeal the Affordable Care Act to then do Medicare for all. Except nobody ever said that. You made it up. Bernie didn't say... You know, what we need to do is repeal the Affordable Care Act and then implement uh, Medicare for All. 
He says, we need to do Medicare for all. He doesn't say the first part. You're inserting the first part. Now, isn't it funny when push came to shove and you had the Republicans really about to repeal Obamacare, who was out there fighting day in and day out saying we cannot do that? Bernie Sanders. So stop with this smear. It's such an obvious smear. Anybody who does any research can debunk it immediately. Yo, I don't want to get rid of the ACA or do anything the Republicans want to do. We shouldn't repeal that. Nobody's saying that. In fact, what you say you want is exactly what Medicare for All is. She goes, we should be building on the ACA. Building to what? Building to what? If you really want to build it and do this gradualism move, you got to go from ACA, public option, single payer. That would be the logical progression if you want to build on it. But you don't want to build on it. Okay, let me give you more. She says... Uh, her reasoning is why she doesn't support Medicare for all. Ah, look, it's, you know, it's hard. It's not practical. I'd support it if we had the numbers, but we don't have the numbers. Okay, so in other words, your philosophy is the exact opposite of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. MLK said, the time is always right to do what's right. Debbie Wasserman Schultz says, yeah, the time is not always right to do what's right. When you don't have the numbers on your side, do wrong. When, uh, when you don't think you can immediately win, don't push for the correct policies. What kind of grotesque, sad defeatism is that? And by the way, it's not really defeatism because she's just using this as an excuse because she doesn't support Medicare for All. But if there actually was somebody who supports Medicare for All, but they go, I'm not in favor of it right now because we don't have the numbers. Could you imagine that in any other context? Seriously, imagine that with civil rights. I mean, look, do I want black people to be treated equally? Sure. Do I want them to have the same rights when it comes to the voting booth? Should, do I su support the Voting Rights Act? In theory, conceptually, philosophically, yes. If we had a clean slate, yes. If we had the numbers, yes. But right now, we don't have the numbers. So we have to be okay with the political reality. So I don't support civil rights or voting rights now. But if we had the numbers, I would. Women's suffrage, same thing. Do it with any, insert any other issue that's a, that's a non-negotiable issue, and you'll see how grotesque that reasoning is. I'm not in favor of the correct policy because I don't think we can get it passed. Uh, uh, st that's such a major, disgusting, uh, you know, logical fallacy that it's hard to even discuss it seriously. Because all I, I have nothing but scorn from the depths of my soul for that kind of thinking. You know, it was hard also, and you didn't have the numbers also when it came to civil rights and voting rights back in the day. When it came to women's suffrage. If people thought like Debbie Wasserman, well, ah, come on, it's not practical. What are we going to do? We don't have a clean slate. Purist, you're so pure. That's what, you know, you want purity tests. That's going to ruin the party to push for things that are correct. Um, and then the, the ultimate contradiction was at the end there. Because what was her reasoning the entire time? Her reasoning was, look, we don't have the numbers. Sorry, we don't have the numbers. It's not practical. We don't have a clean slate. And then at the end she goes, oh, and by the way, I support a public option. Wait, wait, wait. The same argument you used against Medicare for All is the same argument that applies against public the public option. You also don't have the numbers for the public option right now. It's also impractical to push for the public option right now. You also would probably need a clean slate to try to get the public option right now. But you say I support the public option, so why the fuck wouldn't you support Medicare for All? Because you don't support Medicare for All. The same argument you just used against Medicare for All applies on the public option. You don't have the numbers for the public option either. But what did you say? I support it because that's what I support. Hey, but you can't say I support Medicare for All because that's what I support because you don't support it. Just say it, Debbie. Just fucking say it instead of doing your tap dancing and your goddamn lying. Because that's all you know how to do is lie. We saw it throughout the primary. Oh, the DNC is not biased against Bernie. We're going to be neutral on this. Anyway, now let me go to the media and pressure them to give better coverage to Hillary Clinton and to myself. Let me work behind the scenes to try to change the debate time so that we hide them so people don't get a taste of Bernie Sanders and want to vote for him. Let me try to change the voting times in pro-Bernie districts throughout the country. By the way, she takes a tremendous amount of money from the predatory payday loan industry, and she pushed off regulations to protect that industry. So she's, you know, uh, she might as well just be a Republican. Um, but yes, let's apply pressure to her. 
So what I want everybody to do, go to justicedemocrats.com slash single payer. Justicedemocrats.com slash single payer. Sign your name in support of the petition. Because originally there were about 72 Congress people who supported H.R. 676, the Medicare for All bill. Uh, now it's about 104. So you're chipping away. All of your grassroots pressure is working. Justice Democrats, brand new Congress, National Nurses United, we're all working together. The grassroots is applying pressure, and it's working. But I got to be honest with you guys. What I want to do is make Debbie Wasserman Schultz fear yet again that she's going to lose her job. You know, Tim Canova gave her a good run, but she's still terrible, and she's still out there doing the double speak and not supporting progressive values. So apply pressure. If you're in Florida... Or not, call her, call her office and say, look, support it or you're going to lose your seat. Support it or you will lose your seat. We're not interested in this anymore. You don't, this is a lack of logic. You're not even, it, I would have more respect for her if she was just honest about it. I don't support Medicare for all. I don't support it. The furthest I'd go is a public option. Just be honest about it. But you can't be honest about it because guess what? The overwhelming majority of the country now supports Medicare for All. The polls range from 55% to 60% of the American people. Medicare for All is even more po has more supporters in the Republican Party than not having it does. So, I forget the exact numbers. It's not over 50%, but it's like 42% supported, 38% opposed, or something like that. I guess the rest don't know. But isn't that telling? Among the conservatives in the country, like, well, that's one, yeah, Medicare is great, of course, to support Medicare for All. So, independents support it, more Republicans support it than don't, and obviously, like, 80% of Democrats support it. What are you doing? You're supposed to represent us. Not represent your corporate donors and the private health insurance companies and Big Pharma, and that's exactly what you're doing. And you can at least be honest about it, instead of doing your goofy doublespeak and your insanely contradictory explanation.